She found a tooth. He did not recognize me at all. I'm triggered. And we were co-workers. Sexy, Sexy twink, twink. go-go go -go dancer. Go -go dancer. Soy milk latte no hot to Hi, Stan's fans. My name is Stan. Welcome to the world of extra. I'm actually so excited today because I'm kind of like looking back into like my past life. But yeah, we are going to visit every single one of my past part-time jobs. And we are going to visit, we are going to eat at all the restaurants I worked at. We are going to buy things from all the places I worked at. And we are also going to interview one of my co-workers before to get some tea. First stop is Shinjuku. We are by Shinjuku Station right now. Most of my jobs looking back is actually in Shinjuku. We used to live in Nakano, which we might visit later our very first apartment together that we lived in we used to live together so i am currently right outside my very first part-time job it was called daikoku drag <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i have so much tea to spill about this place this was my very first job ever first of all i think we should go in and like buy something and i'm gonna spill so much tea about this place let's go okay you guys let's go in oh my god it's one of those tabs <laughs> This is so triggering. I remember I would have like a badge that says English OK. Oh my god, that's so triggering. Like they would ask us to be like screaming all day, like all the sales they're having. And then at the end of the day, like the manager would message our group chat saying, okay, so you weren't screaming enough. You weren't doing this enough. I remember literally just like having to like do all of this. <laughs> I mean, it's literally just like a normal drugstore. Like, there's nothing special about it, honestly. Oh my god, I remember these baskets. And I have to empty all of these and like put it in the shelf. Oh my god, that orange apron. <laughs> I used to wear that orange apron. I still have a picture, maybe? <laughs> I remember that they would make me hold this like huge sign that said like Daikoku Drag and I would have to like hand people flyers on this little corner over here like literally right here by this huge intersection next to the station and I would have to stand right on this round manhole I'd just be like holding the sign and speaking Chinese they told me to speak Chinese and like yell in Chinese like like, welcome to Daikoku Dodaga. Because most of our customers were actually Chinese. Every lunch break, I would do one of two things. First, either I go to this mall called Lumine, and I would go to like the staircase and just sit there, be on my phone. Because I didn't have internet back then. So I would just go there and like connect to their Wi Fi and literally just be on my phone for like an hour and then go back to work. The drugstore is over here, and Nichome, the gay district, is 10 minutes towards that direction. Oh, bitch. Every after work, even on weekdays. <laughs> this 7-Eleven right here is the 7-Eleven I would always go to every single day for lunch. I don't think you guys understand. This was my very first job, probably like a month after I moved to Tokyo. So I had zero friends, zero idea how like everything worked. I was so intimidated to like go to like actual restaurant around the area. So I would always go to the 7-Eleven for like a sandwich and a smoothie. And because I didn't have data back then, I would always connect to the Wi-Fi here and just be like swiping on Tinder. <laughs> Because I also didn't know anyone. I just started university, no friends, no whatever. So I would just be like swiping on Tinder and be like, Do you wanna go to Nichome later? And then like I would meet up with them after work in Nichome. But it was just like, I didn't have friends and I was a social powerhouse. So you know, I was trying my best to like make as many connections as possible. Thank you 7-Eleven for feeding me and for the Wi-Fi and for... Honestly, queer culture. Yeah. He has no idea about any of these because I was in the closet back then. Uh, but looking back actually even though I didn't have any friends and even though I was like kind of lonely my mental health was actually really good I just moved to a new city everything was so exciting I got a new job and I actually didn't hate that job applying for the job was actually also kind of like a weird process it was like 10 of us interviewed all at the same time and it was like from all over the world like I was Filipino and there was like Chinese people Indian like people from Taiwan I remember there was another person from the Philippines as well and we were all interviewed all at the same time and I thought that's how interviews in Japan for part-time jobs work, but I realized they're just like kind of farming a bunch of like foreign <laughs> university students to work there short term So yeah, the job was whatever I would give it a 10 out of 10 because it was my very first job ever and it was iconic Okay, question for you. What was yes. your very first job ever? Hotomoto. What is that? Bento shop. Did you love yes. it? <laughs> nah <laughs> it's okay. He's actually done a lot of jobs. He's gonna yes. spill some tea about his past <laughs> jobs as well and at one point we were co-workers. Yes. 
and we're going to talk about that later. But first, oh let's move on to my next job. <laughs> so I made it to one of my favorite jobs actually. This is a vegan restaurant called Falafel Brothers. The branch I worked at was in Ebisu, but they closed down. And this one actually, they made it bigger. It was around the corner. It was super small. It sat three people, but I'm glad like they made like a whole place. Not me bumping into the manager, but it's actually super nice. <laughs> Falafel Brothers is among the most popular spots for vegans here in Tokyo. You can choose from this assortment of vegan toppings to have with rice, salad, or sandwich. Everything is vegan, of course. And today we're having rice plates with rice and drink. I feel so uncomfortable, like, spilling tea in front of the manager. <laughs> it's right there. Wait, he's not the manager, he's the owner. Anyway, time to spill some tea. We got ourselves my favorite one here. It's called a Rice Plate. When I came in the morning, I didn't eat breakfast, so I was so hungry. And one morning, I thought I was alone, so I just, like, fed myself, like, the biggest spoon full of the topping in the back. I'm triggered. And as I fed it to myself, I looked to my left and my manager was peeking through the curtain saying, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I was just tasting it to see if it hasn't gone bad. And then he's like, you're tasting it. That was a really big spoonful. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so you <laughs> it's generally such like a delicious vegan restaurant so if you guys are in japan definitely come here if you're vegan or, or even if you're not if you're looking for like a healthy meal so much like vegetables and just like fresh things they make this like in the kitchen every morning it's so funny though because i was never a fan of falafels i remember one time i was working and there was a very famous olympian that i used to watch when i was younger she came in and i was so starstruck and i was making her food for her i don't want to like drop the name because obviously like she probably still comes here but i was sure one of the co-owners, actually, he actually names all the toppings, and the names are so cringy. <laughs> I always thought it was so cringy, so like I would never read it out loud to the customers. I would just like tell them the ingredients. I'm like, you should get a tomato one. I'm not gonna say brunese. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think my manager's gonna watch this. One of the most memorable things from this job, though, there was an Uber Eats delivery, because we also used to do Uber Eats. I think they still do it. But like, after we made the food, this old grandma called, and she was like, I found something in my food. And we were like, what is it? She found a tooth. The woman was too stunned to speak. And so like the manager had to go all the way to the lady's house to check. It was her own tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Just so many like memorable moments from this job. I generally love this job so much. I would rate this job honestly a 10 out of 10 as well. And I got to like work with Ayn, my best friend. Fun fact, I took these pictures. We're just gonna finish eating and let's go to my next job. Before we move on to my next job, I just wanted to plug Buy Extra, my clothing brand. We are working on a few projects this year, so please stay tuned. But if you guys want bracelets, which my mom handmade, necklaces, or my cow collection, please go to buyextra.com. I used to teach English. If you want to earn good money in university and you speak English, definitely teach English in Japan. Their new office is right here, but it used to be in Hamamatsujo, which is an hour and a half commute from my old place in Nakano. I hated commuting there. The company used to be called E4E, but now they changed their name. And actually, Stewie worked there for a little bit. I mean, I think it's a good job to like teach English and like you can choose your shifts and everything. I think we should try to go in the building. I don't think we're allowed to, but let's just go in. I've actually never been to this branch since they moved. Global Standard English Training. Let's go in. Am I allowed to go in? Oh my god, no! <laughs> oh my god! Nice. Their new office is so nice. I loved working there so much that sometimes I would have like full shifts from nine to five. Just like full eight hour shifts. I was actually such a good teacher, I remember. Like a lot of the students would purposefully like book me because I was just such a good teacher. Yes, it is a flex. And yes, it's true. I would say I'm a good teacher. 
<laughs> now we are in Steven's Ben's Convertible. The way I quit this English teaching job is because I got a different English teaching job that paid higher and was easier because it was a startup company and there were no students so Nanami and I decided to sign up for it and there were literally no students and we are going to go there right now. You'll be surprised where the location is actually. And we were co-workers. <gasps> Do you guys recognize this place? Wait a minute, hold on. This is Nichome, the gay district. And yes, I did work here before. And no, it wasn't as a whore. It was not, not a sexy, a sexy twink, twink go go dancer. I actually worked right here. We. <laughs> That's true, we worked there. Wait, what did you do? Like software. Choo choo. <laughs> It was for a startup company. They've gone bankrupt now. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's called Tick Watch. Maybe it's a watch company. Honestly, I want to see what's up. Let's just go in. Like, I honestly don't know what it is. <gasps> Welcome. We are open. It's so weird. It looks so different. But they closed down the school because during COVID, there were no students at all. This was actually my last job before I became a full-time YouTuber. And this was honestly one of my favorite jobs. Not because the job was nice, but because we had zero students. It was a startup company and we had no responsibilities. I would have like seven hour shifts in the weekend, zero students. And I worked with Nanami there. So Nanami and I would literally just be like sitting in the lounge, eating, talking. And after work, we're in Nijama. Actually, let's get more tea from this place. Interviewing an old co-worker we had. <gasps> let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> 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 okay, introduce yourself. <laughs> I stand stands. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm Stan's friend. Okay, so I have a few questions for you about working in Japan. So obviously we worked for an English company. What's your experience as an English teacher in Japan? Well, it's fun because it's mainly for like businessmen, like adults. I guess they're easier to handle. Yeah, than it's kids. like one on one. Five years of my teaching teaching gig. <laughs> Five years of my teaching gig here in Japan. I was assigned to an IT company and I was mainly working in their office so I was almost like a shine. I could enjoy the perks of that company. I was invited to their internal events or their Christmas parties. Wow. Yeah, so it was really nice because I was mainly teaching like top of the top executives of such a huge company. I was even able to teach the CEO and he's now like what in Forbes <gasps> top 10 richest Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you do now? Now I'm in a consulting company, global company actually. Yeah. Do you love it? I love it. <laughs> Would you recommend teaching English in Japan? I mean, why not for a start? That's it's, true. It's the easiest way to actually get a visa. And I would say like it's probably like one of the higher paying part-time jobs if you're part-time like I was. Like I was getting paid 2000 yen per hour doing nothing. <laughs> like a regular part-time rate would be like 1,100 yen and mine was literally double. Or maybe that's because you're bilingual. That's and bisexual. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not. <laughs> I think like there's an imbalance between how much we liked our previous job because for me I'm obviously like part-time and I'm a man so it's like a different experience for me. For a woman, I think there are a lot of chances wherein your, your student like kind of likes you. Even if, you, if there's no malice on your end, or even if it's fully professional. Our women look down on or treated differently than men in the working industry. So it's actually preferred to be a woman if you're a teacher. Like women are more yesashi. Like no one wants to admit it, but like more salary men will want to learn English. With a cute young girl. Young? Forty-four. <laughs> 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 no, 30, 30, 35. So and the answer is yes. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much for being my video. 
That was such a productive interview with Jamie. I hope you guys learned a lot. Now we are going to the Japanese barbecue restaurant that Steven and I worked at together. We worked there for so long, actually, together. And yes, I did work at a Japanese barbecue restaurant simultaneously when I was working at the vegan restaurant. So in the daytime, I would work at the vegan restaurant. And then at night, I would work at the Japanese barbecue restaurant, like Yakiniku. But we have a special guest. We are going to take someone with us to the Yakiniku restaurant because he's actually never been. So he doesn't know where we used to work together. Here is... Hi! Hi, Stewie! <laughs> Hi! My name is Stewie. Did you guys know that Stewie also used to work at one of the English schools that I used to work at? So, well, how was your experience there? It wasn't bad, but it stressed me out because I had to talk to people even on days where I wasn't feeling very social. So that's definitely one thing that stressed me out. But now I'm fine. That's true. Like, uh, you have to be a social person. You're gonna have to talk to like eight different people in one day. Anyway, let's go eat some Japanese barbecue! Woo! We have made it to this nice little shotengai where our old workplace is at. It's actually developed so much, like it's so much prettier than we remember. <laughs> He's so excited. Oh my god, it's here. It's so open. We're actually about to walk into the restaurant and we're so nervous somehow. The way Steven quit this job as well, he literally just stopped showing to his shifts. We're just hoping that the old manager isn't working there anymore. I mean, one of them isn't, but we don't know about the other one. And there's another person who's been working there for 10 whole years and I hope he's not there anymore. The place is called Maduki. Oh my god. We're starting with the bitch they don't know. <laughs> えっと、3人の。はい。どうだ、ジュース呼んでるけど。大丈夫です。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう。あ、もう
ever in my life. <laughs> this is only for you guys. I could never do this ever again. Uh, maybe like other brands. Yeah, maybe. Because the food is good. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's so yummy. I can't deny it. It's actually really good. And this place is supposed to be like really cheap and like a budget yakiniku restaurant. The temperature here is triggering. <laughs> Stewie's just having so much fun, man. <laughs> I remember when I was working here, they actually loved me. Like, I was doing such a good job every single day. And I was, like, very assertive. And, like, I would teach all the new people all the time. So they actually really liked me even after Steven quit. Because Steven actually quit first. And I quit, I mean, like, he never showed up ever again. And then I stayed for maybe about, like, half a year more. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It happened. Oh, my God. I'm so sweaty. Yeah. He was actually so kind. He was so nice. Yeah. He did not recognize me at all. So he was like, so do you do YouTube? And then he's like, what do I search? And I'm like, it's me, Stan Fukase. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll search it out. I'll watch it. <laughs> I, I actually apologized. Yeah, he was like yeah. profusely apologizing. I'm so yeah. sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I never showed up after that one shift. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And then he was like so kind. Oh my god, I want to cry. <laughs> He's like, have the best time tonight. Yeah, oh my god. He's so sweet, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's so nice. Time to leave. Run. 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 What did you feel today going back to all the places we used to work at? It's so nostalgic. It's good that I had the chance to apologize. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned quite a lot about me, my past, and working in Japan. Thank you so much to me for hanging out with us too. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys again in my next video next week. Bye! Bye.